Hello everybody, it's me your doctor friend Siddharth and today we are going to talk on the topic benign prostatic hyperplasia or BPH. In this particular topic, we will deal about the embryology of the prostate, then we will talk about the anatomy of the prostate, various confusions which are present in McNeil zones, I will try to make them as clear as possible. Then we will see some of the USG and MRI pictures of the normal prostate gland. Then we will talk briefly on the functions of the prostate gland. And on the clinical aspect, we will deal about the BPH, etiology, clinical features, investigations and management. On management, in particular, I will talk about the TURP and its consequence TURP syndrome. Since it is a long topic, I am trying to break down this video into two parts. The first one will deal the basic concept and the second part will be dealing on the clinical concept. First thing first, let us start with the embryology of the prostate. This is the diagram taken from Langman's embryology. First of all, I will try to orient you towards this diagram. This is the allantois. This is the urinary bladder. This is the ureter coming from the developing kidney. Here is the seminal vesicle. This is the ejaculatory duct. This part is the pelvic part of the urogenital sinus. This is the definitive urogenital sinus and this is the future penis. At the end of the third month of intrauterine life, at this part, which is also known as pelvic part of urogenital sinus, the prostatic epithelium will start to sprout and it will proliferate and penetrate the surrounding mesenchyme. This will develop into the prostate gland in case of male and in case of female, this will develop into urethral and periurethral glands. This is how the prostate gland develops. Let us now talk about the anatomy of the prostate gland. The prostate gland shown here is a globular fibromuscular gland that surrounds the prostatic urethra from the bladder base to the membranous urethra. It is about 1.25 inch or 3 centimeter long. It is surrounded by the fibrous capsule. It has a base that lies against the bladder neck and it has an apex that lies against the urogenital diaphragm below. The two ejaculatory duct coming from the seminal vesicle posteriorly will pierce the upper part of the posterior surface of prostate to open into the prostatic urethra at the lateral margins of the prostatic utricle. In this particular section, you can see only one seminal vesicle and the ejaculatory duct, but in reality, there will be two seminal vesicles and two ejaculatory ducts. The prostate is related to symphysis pubis anteriorly and it is separated from the symphysis pubis by the extra peritoneal fat. This extra peritoneal fat lies in the retropubic space also known as cave of Regius. The prostate is connected to the posterior aspect of the pubic bone by the facial pubic ligament. Posteriorly, it is related to the anterior surface of the rectal ampulla and is separated from the rectal ampulla by the rectovesical septum also known as fascia of the non villiers. Laterally, as you can see here, is the levator and eye muscle. There are five anatomical lobes of prostate gland. This one is the anterior, this is the posterior, this is the median or middle, and these are the two lateral lobes. So altogether, there are five anatomical lobes. The posterior lobe are more prone for primary carcinoma, and the median or middle lobe are more prone for adenoma. Now let us orient ourselves to the prostatic urethra also. This is the roof of the prostatic urethra and this is the floor of the prostatic urethra. There is not much of anatomy to describe in the roof but in the floor you can see the trigon of the urinary bladder continuing as the uvula of the bladder continuing as the urethral crest. Here is the bulbous swelling this is known as seminal colliculus or verimentinum. At the midpoint of the seminal colliculus is the prostatic utricle and on the either side is the opening of the ejaculatory duct. On either side of the seminal colliculus lies the prostatic sinus where lies the opening of the prostatic ducts. Let us talk about the blood supply. The prostate is supplied by the inferior vesicle artery, the branches of the inferior vesicle artery. And the venous blood from the prostate is drained by the prostatic venous plexus. The prostatic venous plexus is the continuation of the dorsal vein of penis and the prostatic venous plexus will drain the blood into the internal iliac vein. 
Now let us talk about the McNeil Jones of prostate. These are the diagrams taken from Gray's Anatomy. Here I am trying to show the urethra. These are the two ejaculatory ducts and these two are the seminal vesicle. Surrounding the urethra, the innermost part of the prostate gland, which is about 5% by volume, is the periurethral transition zone. Outside the periurethral transition zone lies the central zone, just posterior to the tran periurethral transition zone. The central zone surrounds the ejaculatory duct and it also covers the prostatic urethra posteriorly. Outside to the central zone, which occupies 70% by volume of the prostate gland, is the peripheral zone. It covers almost all part of the urethra except the anterior portion, which is covered by the anterior fibromuscular stoma. Same thing has been shown in the transverse section. By this green areas is the anterior fibromuscular stoma, and this is the central zone. So by the blue areas, these are the urethra, and these are the transitional zone. Outside, here so by the brown area are the peripheral zone. Peripheral zone is prone for carcinoma, and periurethral transition zone is prone for BPH. This is the ultrasound of the normal prostate gland. In this axial view, you can see the hypoechoic region and the hyperechoic region. The hyperechoic region are the peripheral zone, and the hypoechoic region are the transition zone. In between the transition zone and the peripheral zone is the surgical capsule shown by the stars. This is a T2 weighted coronal MRI scan of the prostate gland showing various zonal anatomy. In this MRI, this is the high signal intensity region and this high signal intensity region are the peripheral zone. The low signal intensity region inside the peripheral zone are the central zone and the transition zone. Since central zone and transition zone are both low signal intensity region, they are together called central gland. And again at the midline, here you can see the high signal intensity region. This is the part of the varimentanum. Let us talk about the functions of the prostate gland. The prostate gland produces a thin, milky fluid which contains citric acid and acid phosphatase. The smooth muscles which surrounds the gland squeezes the secretion into the prostatic urethra at the time of ejaculation. The prostatic secretion is alkaline and it helps to neutralize the acidity in the vagina. The prostatic epithelium secretes protease which are the prostate specific antigen into the semen and its job is to cleave and liquefy the seminal coagulum which are formed after ejaculation. Please like and subscribe the channel to get second part as soon as it becomes available.